should be here by now. Welcome back. How'd it go? Everything went great. Got it all right here. You know, you are surprisingly okay right now. Normally when people time travel, they start to first. <laughs> I'm not gonna throw up anymore, I'll be fine. Alright, see you, Charles. So, why a submarine, why time travel, and why this binder? Let me explain. My dad has told me many times about how when he was 11 years old back in 1977, he used to draw submarines and rockets all the time. So as a Christmas gift, I thought I'd make him a scale model of one of those drawings. Uh, time travel is because the binder where he kept all of his drawings actually went missing at some point in his childhood, so I had to go back in time and get that before it happened. But, now that I have it, I can go ahead and start the project, so let's do that. Let me show you what's inside. Opened up, you can see he has a rocket and a multitude of different subs, but the one he has the most drawings on is one called Curve 2. It stands for Civilian Underwater Research Vehicle. 2. He has drawings ranging from side views, top, front, and even section drawings, which is pretty freaking impressive for an 11 year old kid. So with all these, I took them into SolidWorks and started making a model. But it didn't come out all that well. The section drawings didn't allow for the smoothest curvature of the hull, so I allowed myself some artistic freedom. I did some drawings myself trying to make sense of all of his plans, while also adding some of my own personal flair. I tried to make it a little more sleek and modern looking while still retaining his overall design and proportions, and I think I got a pretty good balance of the two. From there, I brought the newly drawn side view into SolidWorks and started getting the generic shape down. After hours and hours of over a span of a week or so, I finally got to a finished model. My computer was a bit laggy recording this, but you can get the idea. One of my dad's drawings did include some outboard motors, so I made sure to include those as well. I made it so part of the hull is removable, so a full interior is revealed. There's a hinging hatch door, seats, ladder, and a control panel. I'll show you what the square hole in the panel is for a little bit later. But actually, hey, here are some renderings I did that really show what it's supposed to look like. And this is where the actual build starts. I didn't start filming the project until I had already finished printing everything, so only still photos had been taken at this point. But once a decent amount of parts were printed out, I started by adding a layer of filler primer to all of the small pieces. When those were drying, the main hall pieces were printed out too. The removable section was printed in one piece and the main hall in two. Parts were test fit and after verifying everything was good, more filler primer was added. Fitment was verified one more time once the front half was printed out. The main hull is actually still in two pieces, they've only been held together by friction fit cylinders and tubes on the bottom of the floor and inside the hull. Before I glue them together for good, I've got an update on what's going on with the build. The original plan was to give this to my dad as a Christmas gift, but seeing as how I'm very behind schedule, it's Christmas Eve and I just put the first coat of filler primer on all the 3D printed parts last night, I'm not going to be able to do that. So instead I'm going to give it to him on his birthday, which is January 3rd, which gives me a a few more extra days to work on this and hopefully get it done by that time frame. But let me show you what I got going on. You've seen it together already, but let me show you some of the features. I said earlier that the hatch is hinging, so here it is in action. The hinge piece and hatch itself are held together with a piece of duct tape temporarily just to make sure it works. The front panel is test fitted with a bolt to hold it in place and a switch set in the square hole. That's what I mentioned earlier. The switch is for three LEDs, two headlights in the front and one taillight in the back. So that's the sub more or less together, but let me show you it in pieces to get an idea of the full scope of the project. The bulk of the work will be finishing the outer hull, but there's also quite a bit of small things to work on, such as the ladder panel, hatch, hinge, these arms, and these motor pods. But before that, I'm going to take a quick break from the project. Because it is Christmas Eve, like I said, I'm not going to work on it anymore today, but I will in the next few days, so I will be back then. After a few days and off camera, I permanently attached the two halves together with super glue. It's an extremely secure bond, and the other body panel fits snugly without falling out. So now the bodywork on the hull can begin, and of course I start with filler primer. After that dried, you can see that the layer lines still persist, but not so much around the joining seam where I'd already sanded it smooth beforehand. 
The removable piece has already been coated multiple times and sanded, so it's looking pretty smooth. Layer lines are still faint though, so I go ahead and give it a few more coats of filler primer, along with the main hull too. And also hey, check out how these pieces make a cool surfing robot kid. While that stuff is drying, I can go ahead and start working on the seats. Quarter inch wooden dowel was chosen to be the main post of the seat, fitting into the bottom of the floor panel and into the base of the seat. Using the chop saw, I cut them down to size and give them a test fit. And after that looks good, I cut some longer pieces to be inserted temporarily while I finish working on them. At this point, the hall pieces were dry. I sanded down the main piece and went ahead and gave it a few more coats of filler primer, and this time upright so I can get the surfaces that I previously missed. After sanding the removable piece, I added some spot putty to a section that had printed pretty poorly due to bad overhangs. Once that dried, I sanded it back and added the last coat of primer to it. The hull and the motor pots got a few more coats as well. Some pieces were filled and sanded off camera and they were ready to be painted their final color. A light coat of black paint was applied and then two more thicker coats. It was around either the high 30s or low to mid 40s when I did this so I had to use a heat lamp to ensure everything dried just fine. After about an hour or so I flipped the arms over and painted the underside too. While those were drying, I worked on the hinging hatch piece. I bolted the hinge itself to the sub and added some super glue onto the connection base. With the hinge lowered, I placed the hatch on top in the right place and then raised the hinge so it made contact bonding the two. I made sure to add a little bit more around the seam just as insurance. After that, I looped a piece of wire from a coat hanger through the bolt hole and painted the whole thing with a few coats of black paint and set it to dry with the rest of the pieces. Now comes the more daunting part of the project, the main body paint. Little things like I painted earlier have never really been an issue for me, but large smooth pieces like this have always been my greatest enemy. I typically paint too thick and get runs, and I did just that. It pulled a little on both sides, but oddly enough it seemed perfectly fine when it dried. I did miss the edge pieces however, so I had to flip it upside down and get those too. Once the motor arms were dry, I ran into a little problem. Now that they had layers of primer and paint, they didn't fit into the holes in the body anymore. No worries though, I just printed off a new pair with a slightly larger tolerance and finished those up. The main hall looks good overall, especially on the bottom, but it still needs more sanding and filling, so I start grinding that out. Once everything is looking good, I start painting it the final orange, and of course, I got runs. So I sanded it back and started recoating it, but trying my best to be more careful. While the bottom side of the hall was drying, I got the ladder panel and painted it its final color of white. The rungs will be silver, but I will hand paint those later. Once the body dried, I flipped it around and started painting the top half. The paint is coming out fantastically, and I'm also getting some fantastic help too. Once they were dry, I could really see the whole thing starting to come together. The separate panels still fit perfectly and looks awesome. The last pieces that need to be painted orange are the motor pods, so after some sanding, they got painted. Throughout the whole project, I've pretty much been neglecting the seats, so it's time to get some work done on those. These were a little ugly looking on the underside, so after sanding the whole thing down, I applied some spot putty over both of them to fill in all the little voids and grooves. 
Once those were set to dry, I went inside and had some help hand painting the interior. And once those were set to dry, I went back out to the barn and finished up the chairs. Back inside yet again, the inner windows were painted silver in lieu of having actual clear plastic. Once that had dried to the touch, I tediously masked off the outer trim of the windows and painted them black. And either the tape I used wasn't the best, or my masking wasn't, because when I peeled it off, the paint had seeped under the edges and made it very jagged looking. I did fix this by scratching away some of the paint with my fingernail. It wasn't perfect, but it worked. But that was done off camera as well as painting the outer window silver and the back of the sub black. And now it's time for the electronics I talked about earlier. A simple breadboard setup was done to verify that all the lights worked. Once I saw everything was good, I soldered together all the components with my friend's help. The lights were then super glued into place, and the wires, switch, and battery were just loosely set in the hall. With the battery pushed back as far as it can go, the floor was added to conceal all the wire routing. The next thing to do is to secure the control panel in with two M3 bolts. I also realized I can go ahead and attach the arms and the motor pods. The pods have already been glued to the arms off camera, so now I can just glue both assemblies to the submarine itself. With that done, the last thing for the electronics is to keep the battery in place. So a piece of double-sided adhesive tape was added to the battery, and then it was pushed back against the wall. Now I could go ahead and add the ladder panel in to cover all of that up. The last piece of the interior was of course the two seats. They had finished drying and the posts were then pushed in and hand painted black. Once those were dry, they were firmly pressed into the floor panel with a nice friction fit. Now the final detail to add was the little propellers. I bought these from a hobby store and printed off some extensions and glued them in place and painted them black. Once dry, they were both added to the motor pods and damn does this sub look good. I'm really happy with how it's looking, but it's not quite done yet. As cool as this is, it still needs a stand, so I made a very simple one out of some scrap wood and some half-inch dowels. Now this looks super great, but it still needs one more thing. A nameplate. I painted the recessed letters silver and very carefully painted the top layer black using a sponge brush. This was meant to emulate machining out a piece of painted or powder coated metal. But once that was glued into place, Curve 2 is officially done.
and that concludes the submarine project. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video because I really enjoyed making it. And at this point in time, I have already given it to my dad, and I think it's safe to say that he loved it. I really do hope he's going to cherish it for a long time. And again, thank you for watching this video. I know it's not my typical subject matter. The next one is either going to go back to the motorcycle or Batman series. But either way, look forward to that. Stay tuned. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Holy f I just realized I'm the reason the binder went missing.